Here's some more icons too with Eagle Access with the hip hop press himself, Dr. Walter M. Kimbrough. How are you doing today? Oh, I'm doing great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being on the show today and coming to our university and blessing us um, with your presence uh, for the Rock the Mic lecture series. Um, so when I said um, hip hop press, what influenced that name? Well, so usually when a person is announced as president, you got to give your, your welcome speech. Yeah. And so I was 37 years old. The okay. average age of presidents at that time was 58. And I was, hey, look, y'all looking at me, and in the 37, I looked like I was 27. So mm -hmm. it was like, I am very different. I'm not like a baby boomer or the veteran generation. I'm from Generation X, and there are certain things that people attribute to that generation. I'm also from the hip hop generation. Okay. And so I'm just going to be true to who I am to do this job the best that I can do. Uh, and that was it. I mean, I didn't think anything about it, but one of the local papers is a weekly paper called Arkansas Times. Next week had an article and the title was The Hip Hop President. <laughs> and so the people at Philander got nervous. They were like, oh, because they're thinking about hip hop and they're thinking about, you know, negative images and all those things. It was like, oh, this is bad. And I was like, you know, I think this is probably brilliant and I'm going to roll with it. Wow. And so I just sort of adopted it and then use that. And so it's funny now because I'm probably one of the few presidents in the country that has a, per I have a brand mm -hmm. and I'll go places and people just be like, oh, that's the hip hop president. It's like, y'all need to know my name no more. It's <laughs> like, but so it's, but it's been a positive thing and it's been able to help me connect with a diversity of people because I've embraced who I am, embracing, you know, black youth culture. And so for, for students at other universities and um, that wouldn't know uh, Dillard or haven't been on the campus right. of Dillard, how is it being the president, um, the seventh president right. at Dillard University. Right. It's, I mean, it's great. You know, Dillard is a liberal arts institution in New Orleans, about 1,200 students, church related. Um, but just one of the your historic and most HBCUs have lots of legacy. But in a city like New Orleans, just very historic. We got the whole Katrina legacy. You're 10 years after that. And so a school that got flooded out completely. Yeah. And to be able to come back and you got four hundred million dollars of damage, but has produced lots of great people all throughout the, the years, like all HBCUs have, uh, but just a special place in that in that city. So so here on Eagle Access, we try to get the sneak peek before everyone else okay. gets it. Um, so I'm glad I caught you before you actually hit the stage. Okay. What would you what, what message would you be blessing the people with tonight? So this is going to be one of those real no holes barred okay. backs back pass look at what's going on with this whole thing called hazing okay. and how it's becoming critical mm -hmm. people man is is like out of so the thing that i tell people i don't come today as a college president yeah. i come as an expert witness wow. so when people get in trouble they wow. call me so okay. i'm gonna tell people the stuff that i see behind the scenes yeah. so yeah. it's gonna be eye-opening okay so just getting on that whole uh, hazing prevention you're an author right um you're a good brother of alpha Alpha fraternity incorporated but more important, like you're author of uh, Black Greek 101. Right. Um, so tell us what inspired you to actually write that book. Well, so part of it for me is that, you know, I started working in higher education in 92. Um, and every year I would try to learn more about our groups. Um, I got to serve on the board of directors for Alpha as an undergrad. And so you're sitting in the board meetings and you're like, ooh, I'm learning all kind of stuff. Yeah. And I was <laughs> like, but then I realized that there were things that all of us do that we don't really understand. We got plots on campuses. Why do we have plots? Why do yeah. we wear jackets with numbers? And so it was all of those things. I said, well, I got all this research and I'm answering these questions and it's, you can't find it anywhere. Mm -hmm. So Lawrence Ross, who's also a brother who wrote Divine Nine, I did a presentation in, in 1999. And he was like, dude, you need to write a book. I was like, really? So he told me how to go about the process, and that's how it happened. So I got inspired by another brother who had just had a book coming out. He was like, no, you need to do a book. Three years later, my book was out. Oh, that's crazy. So, yeah. So one question I always ask every guest on Eagle Access. Um, so what the question is for you, who is Dr. Walter M. Kimbrough? Uh, man, I, you know, I, I am a very complex person. Um, so you, you got the public persona, you know, college president, Dad was a United Methodist pastor, big church, 7,500 members. Mom from California, Phi Beta Kappa, she brilliant. Um, you know, so I, I got the faith-based aspect. I'm still in touch with young people, relate to a lot of different people. Been a musician, like to speak in front of people, but very introverted. Yeah. Um, Die-hard Yankees fan. Wow. I mean, so uh, it's, it's a lot of different aspects to me, but those are the things. I mean, and then, you know, proud of, you know, my wife who is brilliant and then our kids. Um, so it's just the whole package. I get to do a lot of everything, but really deeply concerned about, you know, the plight of our people 
and really want to make sure I'm making an impact on our people, which is why I'm at an HBCU. So what, what tips could you give to HBCU students, but any college student right. um, out in the world now? Well, one of the main things that I'm learning is that more and more students need to network now. And that's, I mean, it's really key, particularly for black kids. You gotta know some people so they can help open some doors for you. There's nothing wrong with that. So we gotta learn not to be shy. We gotta be a little bit more assertive and say, how do I network with someone who does what I think I wanna do? And that's the, that is one of the keys. So it's like somebody who's blowing up doing what you wanna do, reach out to them. The worst they could say is no. If they mean, they might say, hell no. But you can get over that, you know what I'm saying? You get past that. But reach out and connect. And I mean, that's how I got to where you know I am. I've always asked presidents along the way, tell me about this and learn a little bit from a lot of different yeah. people. Yeah. So the networking thing, I mean, you gotta have the, the hustle. You gotta, you know, I tell my, my students on my campus, hustle until you don't have to introduce yourself anymore. Mm. So that's what, you gotta be out there, you gotta know people, networking. I think that's, I mean, you gotta have a basis, good grades, know your subject matter, mm -hmm. but the separation comes from the people with initiative and grit and who know how to network. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Well, once again, it's Omari Collins. I'm with the hip hop president himself, Dr. Walter M. Kimbrough, and he's gonna rock the mic tonight at the lecture series. <laughs>